Good morning. Awesome to be on here, saints of God. As you join in, it is going to be an amazing broadcast. You're going to want to share this particular broadcast with your friends. I'm going to bring on here the 1965 Stanley Frostham prophecy. I've actually got a link to the words of that prophecy for those of you on YouTube on the information below, and it is to my WordPress document blog, and so I'll put that link there. For those of you on my Facebook, I've already got the blog post up to Stanley Frostham's prophecy, and so you'll be able to see that. I'm going to do a couple of things today. I'm going to open in prayer. I'm going to share a dream that I had last night and posted early on Facebook, and I'm going to bring you 2 Thessalonians 2 and read some scriptures. And then I'm going to get into Stanley Frostham's prophecy that I've been posting since 2012 on my Facebook. 2012 or 2013. And God kept telling me yesterday to make sure that I read this prophecy to you today from 1965. Hey, Katie. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, Tricia, thank y'all for joining in. And so I'm going to open us up in prayer and we'll get started. Amen. God, we just thank you for the strength of your word of truth. I thank you for the spirit of truth, Holy Spirit, that brings sufficiency and power of grace upon your word. That is a double-edged sword to our hearts, Father dividing between our intent and our motive, Father, laying everything bare as the Spirit of the Lord is upon us and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I'm going to bring to you this dream. I posted it on Facebook, and I'm going to read to you what I post. And I had this dream last night, waking up into today. Rich and I went to, we wake up at 3 a.m., 3.15 a.m. on days that we work out. And so we woke up at 3.15 a.m. today, got ready, got ready to go to the gym at 4 a.m., worked out. And so I'm just prefacing this because I knew nothing about what was going on. And all while at the gym, I'm getting on Facebook, I'm messaging, I'm scrolling, I'm seeing, I'm replying, because that's what I do in between sets sometimes at the gym, or when Rich goes to get water, he has a water break, when I get through the set and I have a moment, and so I just get on my phone and do things such as messaging, messenger, or either commenting, loving things that are on Facebook that people have commented on my wall. And so, I've been using my phone all morning. I just want to preface it with that. And so, the dream that I posted, and I posted this early on Facebook over almost three hours ago. And I put, last night I had a dream where God was showing me the deception of the new age in the church that has come through sales, S-E-L-L-S, but also sell C-E-L-L phones. There was a play on that in the dream. The enemy was trying to sell, S-E-L-L, the church, the new age. And in the love of money, that's how the enemy was trying to sell the church, the new age agenda. I've been warning about this for months, that the world is in the church. Remember, the church is not a building, it's the people. Since writing the book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, over the last two years, by the way, God has clearly shown me the kingdom of the world that is in the church and has me warning the saints, as I've been doing for over a year now, because in the book, The Spiritual, the Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, an open thesis is the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of the world. And it shows the dichotomy. It shows the battle over the souls of mankind in that dream. And I am trying profusely to get this book out. But God wants it a very particular way. And there's over 225 pages written in the book so far. He has me editing it all over again. 
and I still have about 400 plus pages to write. So it will probably be 700 pages when it's all said and done. Hey, Kathy, love you. So let me return to the dream. I've witnessed people falling away from God, especially in this area. And it initially, and I've been warning about this for months, it initially starts out with money. And I did that the whole month of January, talking about Al Jandel and Van Crouch's book, The Storehouse Principle, and about teaching on tithing and giving, going to Malachi 2, going to Malachi 3, and teaching that people are falling away, and it's initially going to start with money, the spirit of mammon. And so money and getting into the idols of the world where mammon becomes their master. In the dream, I was in this sanctuary of the church where there were pews, the lights were nearly out, and there was but a little flicker throughout, making it difficult to see anything. Suddenly, I noticed that people were bound up unable to see as a veil was placed over their eyes and certain people that were in the dream that I know who are falling away and I've been warning, but they will not listen. And I've been warning them for over a year, over a year that they are involved in the new age and they will not heed it. And all I can do is keep sounding the alarm and my husband and I pray for them. That is all I can do. And of course, They've turned away from me. I am losing friends, but that is okay. I have to sound the alarm. And this is where we are. We are in that falling away. And I did all of this in the month of January, where you can see Daniel eleven thirty-two 32 through 35. And you can see me talking about the great deception and the great falling away. This is where we are. And so... Next, I'm brought into this mall of sorts and see the devil has stolen all these phones of the people. So the devil is stealing the phones of the saints and the people cannot find their phone. And in a minute, I'm going to describe to you this new age phone that was in my dream last night. And I'm telling you, saints, this dream has shaken me. And in my memories today, you can see where Catherine Prim, Catherine Prim has been one of the heavyweight intercessors and one of the biggest consistent givers in my ministry, in our ministry, for over 12 years. This woman and I talk monthly, and she gets visions and words from the Lord for me specifically for ministry. And in my memories today, she has me as a watchman. She says, Robin, Warn the saints, warn the saints, warn the church. The watchman has to be on the wall. And I'm going to get to that post in a minute. But saints, I cannot stop sounding the alarm. I am seeing people fall away. People that I know, that I love, people that are turning to new age. They have turned away from Christ they are renouncing Christ. Now, if this does not disturb you, it absolutely disturbs me. And people in my dream last night were so blind and they were so full of the world and saints, I cannot stop telling you the world is in the church and it's going to come in with mammon. And when it gets a hold of your heart, it is going to pull you into new age and you are going to be totally deceived and you have to get the world out of your heart. You have to get all love of mammon out of your heart. If you have not read the book of Enoch, I encourage you, read the book of Enoch. That book will shake you to your core. It is referred to, prophesied into Scripture in the book of Jude, it's referring to the book of Enoch, and it says it, and it goes in correlation exactly with the entire Bible, and in the end days, Enoch was given vision from God, and the vision that he constantly warns of is that there will be such a love of riches, there will be such 
a deception of riches in the end days. And that is why God had me start January about getting rid of the love of riches out of your soul. Amen. So let me go into my dream again, and I'll describe this phone if I can even describe it. Next, I'm brought into the small of sorts and see that the devil has stolen phones of the saints and people cannot find their phone. Then they're given these different phones to try to call their phone. And it is this new age phone in the dream with these weird button things. People were so busy <clears throat> in this small and all they were doing <clears throat> was caught up in buying things. They were wanting to get the sales in this mall. And they were just so consumed buying goods, buying products, that they were so consumed that they could not see that their phones were exchanged for a new phone. And God keeps bringing to me that they have Romans 1 exchanged the glory of God for the image of man, for the image of things, for the image that is in the earth. And I'll see if I have time to read that. We'll see. And so I'll look at this phone and I'll realize that everything looks high tech. It's, it supposedly looks high tech, but it's not. The main thing about this phone it, it, is it was very confusing. It was very weird. It was no higher tech than the phones that we have. It was just the buttons were kind of like uh, protruding and some were in kind of like a game that had valleys and peaks and some were really, really small and you could barely see the number and the number would go in and out. And so when I see this phone, I see this small and all these people are trying to call their phone. They know that they don't have their phone. And the phone represents communication to God. And that the enemy was trying to bring in another God, a pagan God in new age, and was given the church new phones. And these new phones were called new age phones. That's what they were called. So all of a sudden, I'm taken back into this house and it's the sanctuary, but now it is a house, but it's still the church. And then all the lights are out. It is completely dark and the people cannot call other people. They, they, there is no way for communication. Communication was totally cut off. And so everybody's confused. Everybody's in chaos and they don't know what to do. And all they can do is hold on to these new age phones and they're trying to figure out how these phones work because some of the people cannot see uh, how they work. And this is where the third eye came in in the dream that I did not expound on. But in the dream, it was given that those that had intuition, so to speak, of how to use this phone, how to communicate to God, which wasn't the real God, but a pagan God of new age, that they seemed to be able to work the phone, but the Christians that were seeing this happen had no clue. The true remnant had no clue what was going on, and they had difficulty knowing how to work this phone. And so all of a sudden, I'm in this house. It's totally dark, and it's I'm at these doors. I'm first at the back door, and I start going to all these different doors, and God says, Robin, check to see if the door's locked. Check to see if the door's locked. And so I go to try to lock the door and I pull on it to see if it's holding the lock and the door would not hold the lock. The door would not hold the lock. None of the doors could be locked. And God said, the enemy is in the church and the doors are not locked. And then all of a sudden, I saw a comparison to cell phones of how cell phones are locked or unlocked. And I saw the, the uh, consideration of the association along with cell phones being locked and unlocked. And the unlocked representing the enemy coming in and communicating with the souls. 
Now, I cannot say it enough, and even over two years ago, when the Holy Spirit called me to a fast, and I was just starting uh, the book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, he called me to this urgent fast, and some of y'all might remember, and it was critical, and God knew what was going to happen that week, and God broke something that was so powerful of the enemy that had been against me on people that I love, making them see me as evil. And this is what you're going to see also in the time where the new age is really getting big in the church because God showed me the dreams that come to people are through the third eye. Now, I've had people that this has happened to, and I know that this absolutely happens. And so the third eye, the kundalini spirit, that sixth chakra, that's what the third eye is in the pineal gland. That third eye gives people dreams and people will think it is from God when it is actually from the kundalini spirit. And it is going to come against God's saints to make them look evil, to make them look bad. And so as I was writing the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease, two years ago, God called me to this fast. God showed me that many uh, in the church pray soulish prayers. Many in the church pray soulish prayers. And the Holy Spirit dealt with me that whole week, two years ago. And he just showed me, Robin, look at your thoughts. Look at your thoughts. Look at your thoughts. You're, you're agreeing with the accuser of the brethren. You're agreeing with the accuser of the brethren. Break agreement with the accuser. Break agreement with the accuser. And I'm telling you, I was under the conviction of Holy Spirit all that week. And things were happening where the enemy was attacking me, making me look bad to other people. I went in tra tra travail. I called the people that I knew I could depend on that were close to me. I told them I could not visit them that Friday because I was in complete grief that I was in no good mental space to visit them. And then the Holy Spirit said, share your heart. And so I shared my heart and they said, Robin, that very person is about to come to our house on Thursday. And I said, oh my goodness, this is God's plan. This is why God had me fast. And this is why God is going to do something this week because everything was falling into place. And so leading up to that Thursday, God just dealt with my heart. And he said, Robin, anytime you think negatively about another person, you're in agreement with the accuser of the brethren. All through the day, all through the night, God was having me break agreement with the accuser. And then all of a sudden, Wednesday night before the meeting, that my loved ones were having with someone else that was deceived and caught up in this deception, particularly aimed at me. All of a sudden, I had this dream. And in this dream, the person that was involved and in influencing that mindset was in this hospital. And they had a gazillion wives. And then all of a sudden, one of the wives come in and they went to go kiss her, and she turns, and they kiss her cheek, and she jumps up on the table, and she says, Robin Kirby Gatto is a fisherman of men, and she just kept doing this. She is a godly woman. She is a fisherman of men, and the spell was broken off of everybody. Well, the next day, the night before, that day when my loved ones met with the one that was taken in to this deception, and I told my loved ones, I said, this is confirmation. God is going to break this thing off. God had been dealing with my heart to where I would not pray from my soul, but I would pray the effectual prayers of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, that day, that thing broke off that person and we were reconciled. And it was totally destroyed. And God had given me before Exodus 14, 13 and 14, where Moses, and let me give you this, and then I'm going to go to 2 Thessalonians 2. And this is for some of y'all that are going through things right now. Exodus 14, 13 through 14, scripture says, Moses told the people, fear not. Now, this is a right now word for the church. We are not to be in fear. 
We are to be awake because for us, the remnant, hallelujah, I am telling you the kingdom of heaven. I am telling you power like Acts 2, Acts 4, Acts 5, the power of signs and wonders, healings, deliverances. It, it is going to be beyond anything we have ever seen in our lifetime. And it is coming this year. And so there has to be a division in the church. And God is Ezekiel 37, 33, as I've mentioned in another broadcast, coming to the earth with his sword, with judgment. And it's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And that's what we're seeing. And so this is going to be a verse for this hour. Please, saints, keep your hearts pure. Do not think poorly of anybody. Do not get in agreement with the accuser of the brethren. And pray effectual prayers that avail tremendous power. Exodus 14, 13 and 14, Amplified Classic. Moses told the people, fear not. Stand still, firm, confident, undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall never, someone needs to hear this, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Saints, that is a right now word because there is such deception. The persecution is going to be intensified. It's not going to be outside of the church. It's going to be inside of the church and people will think they are doing the work of God. And you have got to keep your hearts pure and not given to any negative thinking. Amen. And so let's now go to 2 Thessalonians, and I'm going to read 2 Thessalonians, just a few verses, and then I'm going to read, uh, then I'm going to read Stanley Frostham's prophecy, amen. And please, saints of God, please send this video. If you're on YouTube, send it to people in your church. Send it to your pastors, amen. Because again, the church is not a building, it's the people. So 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1, Amplified Classic, but relative to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and our gathering together to meet him, we beg you, brethren, not to allow your minds to be quickly unsettled or disturbed or kept excited or alarmed, whether it be the that some pretended revelation of the Spirit or by the word or by letter alleged to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has already arrived and is here. Let no one deceive you and beguile you in any way. For that day will not come except the apostasy comes first. Unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians has come. And the man of lawlessness sin is revealed who is the son of doom of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and insolently against and over all that is called God or all that is worshiped, even to his actually taking his seat in the temple of God and proclaiming that he himself is God. This is the new age. This is what the new age is, saints. And now you know, do you not reco recollect that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now you know what is restraining him from being revealed at this time. It is so that he may be manifested and revealed in his own time for the appointed time for the mystery of lawlessness, that hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority is already at work in the world. But it is restrained only until... He who restrains it is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed, and the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and bring him to end by his appearing at his coming. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is through the activity and working of Satan and will be attended by great 
<clears throat> power and with all sorts of pretended miracles and signs and delusive marvels, all of them lying wonders. And by unlimited seduction and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, going to perdition because they did not welcome the truth, but refused to love it that they might be saved. Therefore, God sends upon them a misleading influence, a working of error, and a strong delusion to make them believe what is false, in order that they all may be judged and condemned who did not believe in, who refused to adhere to, trust in, and rely on truth, but instead took pleasure in unrighteousness. But we, brethren, beloved brethren, by the Lord ought and are obligated as those who are in debt to give thanks always to God for you because God chose you from the beginning as his first fruits, his first converts for salvations through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and your belief in adherence to trust in and reliance on the truth. Now, this is what we're going to get into and I'm going to read Stanley Frostum's prophecy. What is so odd, and I'm just going to bring this up because God just keeps putting it on my heart. And so Monday, I saw the personalized tag. Y'all know how I believe God speaks to me through personalized tags. It might be cuckoo, but hear this point because I just want to make this point. And so Monday, we go out and I see the personalized tag, Vex. I post it up. Two days ago, we're out, and I see the personalized tag, antagonist, A-N-T-G-N-S-T, -T, for antagonist. Now, antagonist is representative of the Antichrist spirit, and it means a person who actively opposes or is hostile, an adversary, and Satan is accuser of the brethren and adversary. Our adversary goes around, 1 Peter 5, 8, like a roaring lion. And so, saints, this is the hour to be awake. Now, I'm going to read you this 1965 prophecy that I've been posting on my Facebook in either video or its entire prophecy. I've already got the blog post up on Facebook to my website for those on YouTube, I will put it in the information. This is a lengthy prophecy. If you cannot stay the whole time and listen, come back later and listen later. And so Stanley Frosham from 1965 has this prophecy. He was born in 1882 in England and he lived till 1969. And he was with the Assembly of God and his nickname was God's Prophet with a Pen. That's what he was known as. And so I'm going to read to you his prophecy. First, great judgments. With great judgments will I plead with the population of this country. Great darkness is coming upon the countries that have heard my gospel, but no longer walk in it. My wrath shall come upon them. The darkness shall be so great and the anguish so sore that men shall cry out for death and shall not find it. There shall be a lingering death, a famine, and great catastrophes. Now, I want to interject here. Revelation 3.10 talks about the church of Philadelphia, that those that have brotherly love, that that church will be kept from the trying and testing that is to come upon the whole world. I want to interject that and bring peace. Amen. Now let me return. My wrath shall be manifested against all ungodliness. It shall come with great intensity. You have known my love, but not have experienced my wrath or my severity. My judgments are literal and not a thing to be passed over lightly. 
realize the severity of my judgments and my intense anger against the sin in my household. My judgments shall begin in my house, for I will cleanse my house that it be not a partaker of my wrath against the iniquities of the cities. Before I visit the nations in judgment, I will begin at my house. When I do cause my wrath to come upon the cities of the world, my people shall be separate. I desire a people without spot or wrinkle, and such will be preserved by me in the time of my wrath, which will be coming upon all iniquity and unrighteousness. I am going to prepare you for the coming days by a hard path that will cause many to cry out to me continually unto me. For when the going is easy, men do not seek me, but rejoice in a temporary blessing. And when that blessing is removed, they so often turn this way and that way, but do not come to me. I am showing you these things in order that you may be seek me continually with great diligence. As you seek me, I will open up truths to you that have not been seen before. And these very truths will be such that will enable you to stand in these last days. As you are persecuted, reviled, and rejected by your brethren... Then you will turn unto me with all your heart and seek me for that spiritual life that you need. So that when the tribulation comes, you will have that which will enable you to stand. For many will be tossed to and fro. Men's hearts shall fail them because of trouble on every hand. These days shall be very terrible the likes of which have never been seen before. Now I'm reading the coming glory and deceiving spirits. When I visit my people in mighty revival power, it is to prepare them for the darkness ahead. With the glory shall come great darkness, for the glory is to prepare my people for the darkness. I will enable my people to go through the darkness because of the visitation of my spirit. Take heed to yourselves, lest ye be puffed up and think that you have arrived. Many shall be puffed up as in the olden days, for then many received my message, but they did not continue in it. Did I anoint Jehu? Yet the things that I desired were not accomplished in his life. Listen to the messengers, but do not hold men's persons in admiration or adulation. For many whom I shall anoint mightily with signs and miracles shall become lifted up and shall fall by the wayside. I do not do this willingly, for I have made provision that they might stand. I call many into this ministry and equip them, but remember that many shall fall. And we see this all through the Old Testament, Daniel 11, 32 through 35, and through the New Testament, Matthew 24, 1 through 12, 2 Thessalonians 2. We see this all through the New Testament. Let me get into the rest of the prophecies. They shall be like bright lights, and people shall delight in them, but they shall be taken over by deceiving spirits, and shall lead many of my people astray. Hearken diligently concerning these things, for in the last days shall come seducing spirits. They shall turn many of my anointed ones away. Many shall fall through diverse lusts, and because of sin abounding. But if you will seek me diligently, 
I will put my spirit within you so that when one shall turn to the right hand or to the left hand, you shall not turn with them. But instead, you will keep your eyes fixed wholly on your Lord. The coming days are going to be the most dangerous, difficult, and dark. For there shall be a mighty outpouring of my spirit in judgment upon many cities, and many shall be destroyed. My people must be diligently warned concerning the days ahead. And I think of the mudslides in California. That's what's coming to me right this second, saints. Many shall turn after seducing spirits, and already many are seducing my people. If those who do righteousness that are righteous, it is those who do righteousness that are righteous. And what's interesting is today, I see IX fruits, which is for nine fruits. IX is the Roman numeral for the number nine. And I see fruits. Three months ago in December before Hanukkah, and I have these posted on my wall today, was nine, F-R-U-I-T, nine fruits, Galatians 5, 22, 23. That is about the righteousness being revealed in us, the fruits of Holy Spirit. Many cover their sins by great theological words, but I warn you of seducing spirits who instruct my people in an evil way. Many of these I will anoint that they in turn may purify and sift my people. For I will have a holy people. When I come, I shall not find faith upon the earth, but in a few. For when the time of testing comes, many will depart from the Lord. Many shall come with seducing spirits and hold out lustful enticements, you will find that after I have visited my people again, the way will become more and more narrow. The visitation that's coming this year that Holy Spirit's preparing us for, that God has been saying, the visitation that comes this year, the revival, the glory, the outpouring, that's what this is referring to. The way is going to get more narrow. That's what this is referring to. And fewer shall walk therein. Be not deceived. The ways of righteousness are my ways. For though Satan comes as an angel of light, hearken not to him. For those who perform miracles and speak not righteousness are not of me. Not of me. I warn you with great intensity that I am going to judge my house and have a church without spot and wrinkle when I come. I desire to open your eyes and give you spiritual understanding that you may not be deceived, but may walk with uprightness of heart before me, loving righteousness and hating every evil way, hating every evil way. Look unto me and I will make you to perceive with eyes of the spirit the things that lurk in darkness that are not visible to the human eye. Let me lead you in this way that you may perceive the powers of darkness and battle against them. It is not a battle against flesh and blood. For if you battle in that way, you accomplish nothing. But if you let me take over and battle against the powers of darkness, then they are defeated And then liberation is brought to my people. Now, the heading, the way of deceivers. I warn you to search the scriptures diligently concerning these last days. For the things that are written shall indeed be made manifest. There shall come deceivers among my people in increasing numbers who shall speak forth a truth And shall gain the favor of the people. For when the people shall examine the scriptures and say, What these men say are true is true. Then when they gain the hearts of the people, then and then only shall they bring out the wrong doctrines. Therefore, 
I say that you should not give your hearts to men, nor hold people's persons in admiration or adulation. For by these very persons, Satan shall gain entry into my people. Watch for seducers. Do you think a seducer will brandish a heresy and flaunt it before the people? He will speak words of righteousness and truth and will appear as a minister of light, declaring the word, the people's hearts shall be one. Then when the hearts are one, they shall bring out their doctrines and the people shall be deceived. The people shall say, did he not speak thus and thus? And did we not examine it from the word? Therefore, if he is a minister of righteousness, this is that he has now spoken, we do not now see in the word, but it must be right. For the other things that he has spoken were true. Be not deceived. For the deceiver will first work to gain the hearts of many, and then shall bring forth his insidious doctrines. You cannot discern those who are of me and those who are not of me when they start to preach, but seek me constantly And when these doctrines are brought out, you shall have a witness in your heart that these are not of me. Fear not, for I have warned you. It is possible that the very elect may be deceived, but it is not possible if you walk in holiness and uprightness before the Lord. For then your eyes shall be open and the Lord will protect you. If you will constantly look Unto the Lord, you will know when the doctrine changes and will not be brought into it. If your heart is right, I will keep you. If you will look constantly to me, I will uphold you. The minister of righteousness shall be on the wise. His life shall agree with the word and his lips shall give forth that which is holy, true. There will be no mixture. When the mixture appears, then you will know he is not a minister of righteousness. The deceivers speak first the truth and then error to cover their own sins, which they love. Therefore, I exhort and command you to study the scriptures, study the scriptures, relative to seducing spirits. For this is one of the great dangers in these last days. I desire you to be firmly established in my word and not in the personalities of men, that you will not be moved as many shall be moved. I would keep you in the path of righteousness. Take heed to yourselves and follow not the seducing spirits that are already manifesting themselves. Diligently inquire of me when you hear something that you have not seen in the word and do not hold people's persons in admiration. For it is by this very method that Satan will hold many of my people. The way of triumph. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly that you may triumph where I triumphed. On the cross, I triumphed over all the powers of Satan, and I have called you to walk in the same path. It is when your life is on the cross that you shall know the victory that I have experienced. As you are on the cross, seated in me, then you shall know the power of the resurrection. When I come in my glory, the principalities and powers in the heavenly places shall be utterly broken. Fear not, for I have given you the power whereby you may tread down the powers of darkness and come forth victorious through every trial. As you are on the cross, then you are victorious. It was on the cross that I triumphed over all the powers of the enemy. My life shall flow through you, through as you enter into these precious truths. Look unto me and appropriate my life as your eyes and desires are toward me. And you know what it is to be crucified with me, 
then you shall live and your anointing shall increase. It was not in my life as I walked upon the earth, but rather as was in my life as I hung upon the cross and openly spoiled the principalities and powers. Now we see this in 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2. Paul says, I choose to know nothing except for Christ Jesus crucified. He also says that when we are crucified with Christ, we're resurrected with him. Amen. I am showing you truth that shall cause you to overcome. I have power over the wicked one. This is the truth that will liberate you and those around you. You shall know also the fellowship of my sufferings. There is no other way whereby you may partake of this heavenly glory and to reign with me. My word says that if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. I desire to make these truths real within you as you keep them before you. You will in turn liberate many who are in bondage. You will have revelation of those who are in darkness and will have the keys to liberate the captives. Many seek to liberate, but they do not have the keys. Oh, saints, that is chapter six of my new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, The Keys of the Kingdom of Heaven. And I'm telling you, it's powerful. He's so on target. Upon the cross continually, you will know the power of my resurrection. If you will indeed judge yourself, you shall not be judged. As you seek my face and desire to be cleansed by me in all truth and sincerity of heart, I will judge you in the secret place and the things that are in the secret place of your heart shall not be made manifest to others. I will do it in the secret place and no man will know it. The shame that will be seen on many faces shall not be seen on your face. Therefore, in mercy and love, I am instructing you in order that you may partake of my glory. As you are willing to walk with me and rejoice in your sufferings, you shall in turn partake of my glory. Look unto me, for you have need of power to overcome the wicked one and the bondage bondages and other lives. I said that if a man will judge himself, he shall not be judged. It is not my good pleasure that the shame of my people be seen by all. How can I judge the world if I judge not first my own house? Hearken unto these things that I am telling you, for if you will not hearken unto me, thy shame shall be evident to all. Now God's part and our part. I would have you consider my life on earth. The anointing upon me was great and yet the temptations were great on every side. They came in one form and then another, offering me first the glory of kingdoms of the earth and then in the form of reviling and persecution. There will be great glory given to my people, but also the temptations will be intensified on every side. Think not that with the glory, there shall be no temptations or persecutions. The glory to, to my church shall be great. And so also the temptations from the enemy to turn my people from my paths. I warn you again that when the glory shall be manifested, the temptation shall be great until very few that started shall finish the course. First of all, they say shall be offered great worldly possessions and then will come great revilings and unbelief. Consider your Lord that as he walked, so it shall be for you. There shall be need of great intensity of purpose. I posted about that yesterday. Intensity. At times, it will seem that everyone is rising up against you, trying to turn you from the course that I have set for you. It is written of me that I set my face as flint to go in the direction that my father had prescribed for me. If you will finish the course the Lord has laid down for you, you too will have to set your face as a flint. 
With great determination, you must walk in the course laid down for you. Many of your loved ones and those who follow with you will seek to persuade you and to try to turn you from the course. With many words that seem right in the natural, they will speak to you. Did not Christ rebuke Peter, who would turn him from the course that God had prescribed? Understand these two things and meditate on them solemnly. The persecution and the darkness shall be as great as the glory in order to try to turn the elect and the anointed ones from the path the Lord has laid down for them. Many shall start, but few shall be able to finish because of the greatness of grace that shall be needed to be able to endure unto the end. The temptation and the persecution of your Lord was continuous. He was tempted by Satan in many forms throughout his entire life and even to the cross where the ungodly cried, If thou be Christ, come down from the cross. Think not that there will be a time of no persecution, for it shall be from the time of your anointing until the end. Difficulties and great persecution will go on to the end. The Lord must prepare you to be an overcomer in all things, that you may be able to finish the course. The persecution shall increase even as the anointing shall increase. In paths of judgment and righteousness shall the Lord God lead his people and bring them into the place which he has chosen for them. The Lord has chosen a place for his people, a place of righteousness and holiness where he shall encamp around them. All who will be led of the Lord will be brought into this holy place. Woo! For the Lord delights to dwell in his people and to manifest himself through his people. The holiness of the Lord will be manifested through his people. Let the Lord lead you and he will lead you in the difficult places. He led his people of all through a place where no man dwelt, where no man passed through, in a place of great danger and the shadow of death. The Lord will indeed lead his people again through such places and at the same time will bring them out into a place of great glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Understand that the way <clears throat> toward the glory is fraught with great danger and many shall fall to the right and or the left. Many shall camp on lesser ground, but the Lord has a place of holiness and no unclean thing shall dwell among his people. Woo! Isaiah 35, 8. Put your trust in him and he will bring you into the place of holiness. He desires to bring his people into great glory the likes of which has never been seen. For this is what the Lord will do for those who put their trust in him. It is a place of darkness and great danger, and it will separate his people into the place where he would have them walk. He will protect them from the voices that would turn them from this, his path. He will bring them through the dark places and treacherous paths and lead them out into the light of his glory. He will rejoice greatly over his beloved and cause them to be filled with unspeakable, with joy unspeakable. He seeks to lead his people into a new place of grace and glory. Well, he will indeed encamp among them. Put your trust in him and he shall surely bring you into this place. Fear not the days to come. But fear only this, fear this only, that you shall walk in a manner pleasing to the Lord. In this time, I am ordering and setting up my church, and it shall indeed be pure without spot or wrinkle. I will do a work in my beloved that has not been seen since the foundation of the world. I've shown you these things that you may seek the Lord diligently with all your heart 
and that you may be a perseverer of his people. Two more paragraphs. I'm almost finished. Hang on. Run not to this one or that one. For the Lord has so ordained that salvation is in him and in him alone. You shall not turn to this shepherd or to that one. For there shall be a great scattering upon the earth. Therefore, look unto him, for he will indeed make these things clear to you. You shall not look here or there, for his wails shall increase your strength and your faith as he prepares you for the times that are coming. The truths that I have revealed to you must become part of you, not just an experience but a part of your very nature. Is it not written that I demand truth in the inward parts? It is the truth of the Lord expressed in your very being that shall hold you. Many shall experience the truth, but the truth must become a part of you, your very life. As men and women look upon you, They will hear not only the voice, but see the expression of the truth. Many shall be overcome because they are not constant in my ways and because they have not permitted the truths to become a part of them. I am showing you these things that you may be prepared and having done all to stand. Saints, that is the prophecy from 1965 from Stanley Frostham. Again, the link is on my Facebook, and the link is below in information on this YouTube video. Saints, we are here. It is this year. It is time to enter into the place where God's glory is going to be poured out, And so there is a separation and he's preparing the remnant for the outpouring of his Holy Spirit for his glory. Hold on, saints. God is able. Hold on to grace and endure. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you.